In this tutorial, we're going to show you some of our basic work area setup and some of the optional settings that we have set. First of all, we want to make sure that we're on the design tab. We have four tabs in total, the design, the store, the library, and the send. The design is where we lay out our artwork. The store is where we can actually buy additional designs, not something that we use too much. The library is where we can store our own designs and the send is where we take our artwork that we've created and we send it to our machine. So starting in our design tab, we have our work area. We've set our work area to a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter square. We've done this because the vinyl that we standardly use is 30 centimeters wide. This can also be done in inches. If you want to work in centimeters or inches, we go to our settings button at the bottom right hand side of the work area select that and we have some overall defaults that we can use we have um, our default language which is set to English we can have our save location change from our hard drive on our computer to a remote library if need be units of measurements we have set to centimeters that's our preferred unit of measurement um, we have our dimensions that can be shown. This is exceptionally handy, especially when we're trying to scale designs to fit balloons. So we're, we can see something in the design and see how it relates to, to real world conditions. Uh, so this is something we have changed from inches to centimeters. Um, everything else was set as default. I'm just running through some of these other ones here. On defaults, page orientation we leave as standard and we also have default fill style as outline only um, again these can be changed to your preference uh, we don't have always display mat on I'll come back to that shortly cut to edge of paper we do not select it is an option you can use however we prefer to make sure that our cutting blade doesn't get too close to the edge of the vinyl that way we re remove any potential for failures or where it can catch the edge of the vinyl. Registration marks we don't need, not for the type of work that we're doing. We're not doing a print and cut, we're just doing a cut. Um, panel mode, this is something new for this version of the software which is fantastic. We have it set to flexible panel mode, but you have flexible, single or multi. Single panel mode, if I select this, I'm just gonna click OK to come out of this panel. What it's referring to is this panel at the right hand side. This is the selection of tools that we can use within the studio software. So I want to go to the page setup button, select this one, and it gives me this panel at the right hand side. This is uh, something that can be moved and pop out, but if we select another tool at the right hand side, it'll be overwritten, the other one will close, the new one will open. If in the options, we reopen that up, we go to our... Uh, display and change that to multi-panel mode click OK when we select the right hand side now it'll pop multiple panels out so we can have multiple tools at the right hand side popped out so we can see them as we're working the third option which I is my preferred option is we go into our defaults again and we go into flexible panel mode we pl click apply OK I'll close these so we can see what happens. We can pop a panel out, and as we select through them, it, it does cycle through them. But if we move this away, and we bring another tool and panel out, they'll actually, when we bring them together, they'll lock together. And we can move that and create our own personalized work area. So if you've got tools that you use a lot, tools that you're working with at the same time, you can have multi-panels, or you can, I think they do kind of locked together or they did before um, there we go and they will kind of magnetize and snap together and you can move them around as a group so this is a really nice tool we can minimize each one but it stays in that locked section for you so I think that's a, a, a very powerful way of personalizing your own work area one of the other things that we do is once we set up our page size, which is done on the page setup tab, we have three tabs within that. We have the page size, the grid, 
and a registration mark. We do not use this for the vinyl again, this is for a print and cut option, not something that we're covering in this tutorial. But this one for the page size, we've got it set to custom. We've got it set to 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. The width is set. We can't go past this because the vinyl is only 30 centimeters wide or approximately 12 inches. We can go higher though. We can change this to any desired height and it will stretch the image uh, or the work area to give us a longer work area to work in. You'll notice that it's actually wider than it is high, but we still have this arrow here. That's indicating the direction of which it's going to go into the machine. So this is actually the width of the vinyl, and this is the length that runs across this way. Our preferred work area setup is to have this arrow at the top of the screen. It makes a little bit more sense to us because that's the direction that the vinyl goes into the machine. So back on the page setup, we can change the orientation. So now the arrow is pointing up over, which gives the direction of travel, how the vinyl is going to go into the machine to be cut. Additionally, when we're laying out text and other items, it's easy to lay them up and bunch them closer to the, the, the beginning of the vinyl to be cut. On the cutting mat, we don't use cutting mat for the vinyl. We want to make sure that the cutting mat is turned off. If it was turned on, you would see it like this. So it gives you the cutting mat visual. But we're just going to turn that off, so select none. I'm just going to reset my work area back to my original 30 centimeters square. Make sure the orientation is set so it's got the arrow at the top. With that, we can also see this red line. This red line is a cut boundary. What the software is doing is creating a, a barrier, um, an invisible edge, if you like, that stops the cutting blade going to the edge of that vinyl. So that's where it's in the cut to edge option. So we've got this barrier, which stops it cutting right to the edge, which is something that would potentially catch on the edge of the vinyl and destroy the work that you spent all this time doing. So we have this, this red line, and the way to get the red line is here. Show cut border. If you deselect that, the border goes. You reselect it, it reappears. However, even if you turn it off, it is still there. You just can't see it. So if I take a text tool, so the left hand side, I'm selecting my text tool option. I'm just going to place the cursor there, and we're going to write, let's have balloon. We've got some very nice fancy text there. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to resize this text just using the corner selection point, and this means it'll keep it in proportion. This is the text that I potentially could cut. And I'm going to place that just next to the edge of the document. So we may think that this would be absolutely fine because we've got it right the way in on the side of our document. However, if we were to go to our send screen, so select the send tab at the top, this is going to show us and it glows. If you can see the difference between this part here and this part here, this one's glowing red and this one's the subtle red. This is the software telling us the parts it's going to cut. And this part it isn't cutting because it's actually outside of the boundary area. So if we just switch back to our design screen, we select the shortcut border, put that on. You can see that strikes right the way through the edge of the letter B there. So we go back to our send screen and you can see that's exactly where it cuts through. So that's the unsafe area, so it will not cut. It'll cut everything else, but this little section here it'll miss. So all we need to do is just nudge that through onto the inside of that line and they'll be quite happy to cut that. So we find it very helpful if we have the show cut border on because then we can work safely within that. I'm just going to minimize that now. So we've got our sizes and we've got our cutting map turned off, the rotation we're happy with and the show cut border. So that gives us a really nice work area to work in. It's safe. If we need to stretch it out to give us more space, we can certainly do that because we use vinyl from a roll. So we've got a much longer area to work with. But standardly, we set it up as a 30 centimeter square or a 12 inch square because it gives us a familiar workspace to work in. The other thing that you can see in the background here is the gray grid lines. These are for reference only. They help you align your work, give you a visual reference for size. 
you can adjust these you can change the colors and the spacing to do that again it's in the page setup select the grid option here so we've got show grid and we've also got snap to grid show grid will turn the grid on and off snap to grid will actually when we select our work it'll jump and snap to the different lines and dimensions as we work through for what we do we tend to not have the snap to grid function on however it is something that you can turn on as and when required we have it on our standard square grid and we have the option of changing the spacing we can use the slider or we can use the um, the box there that we can put the figure into that we require so we'll set ours here to one centimeter and you can have divisions that's the divisions within the one centimeter so each one of these spacings will be half a centimeter but again you can work in inches changing on the options to inches everything within the program will change to inches and it'll be more familiar for you to work with again colors we can change it to some standard colors or we've got uh, an advanced feature where we can adjust the color as well so let's change it to say red and then you can kind of work through all the different colors to find the one that you're happy with that works for for you on your computer with your eyes what what you can see the best so for us we go with a gray but a much softer gray so it's not so busy so I'll just adjust it there I'm happy with that you don't need to save it it just sets it as soon as you've let go and then we just close that back down and it gives us a very nice work area that's that's good for us for, for visual reference and um, but as you can see we have the dimensions of the text there because we've selected it we've got 17.82 centimeters by 8.514 this is that option that we selected that says show dimensions again a very helpful tool when we're working with vinyl that we're creating for balloons we want to make sure that we get the sizes accurate so as you adjust anything size wise it's going to give you those dimensions live as you increase or decrease its size so we'll select that and delete so that's our basic setup of our our work area we have the four tabs at the top we have the tools at the side each of the tools will if you hover over it give you a little pop-up to tell you what it is and um, we have certain ones that we use and certain ones that we don't and um, the page setup yes the pick scan is not something that we use and certainly something that we cover in this tutorial the fill and the line colors yes we certainly use the trace a very powerful tool and uh, this is for taking images and converting them into something that we can cut we have our image effects panel text style panel the alignment transform replication panel and modifier panel they're all ones that we use um, along with the offset panel the ones that we don't use this is a new one for this piece of software is the pop-up panel this is for more of the craft making side the um, stipple panel tool this needs um, a particular cameo 3 or the silhouette curio machine to do that not something again that we use for balloons and this one is the emboss which is for specifically the curio machine again not something that we use so these three options at the bottom are not something that we use within the balloon world as standard along with the tools at the right hand side you also have a selection of tools at the left hand side um, the selection tool the point selection tool line square the freehand text draw a note this is where we can actually add a little sticky note and add bits of information this is not something that gets cut out this is just something little references or reminders for yourself as you're working then we have the eraser tool and the scalpel tool all very useful and very handy to work with and we also have the selection of tools that run across the top and we also have them in the menu bar and um, whether it's a, a mac or a windows in the top menu bar there is a drop down panel with all of those tools on as well what we find within the software is that the tools are replicated in many ways which is great because it means we can find them either at the right hand side perhaps at the top in the drop down menus or often we can find them in the right mouse click as well so we'll just put that text back on so you can see so let's put our text here if i select an object right mouse click and i often get a majority of tools that are very specific to what i need anyway it'll give you the tools that you want to use but additionally along with the right mouse click you also have shortcuts on your keyboard 
A shortcut is where you pair something like command and then a letter or control if you're on a PC and another letter. So a typical one that you'd be familiar with is control C or command C and this is to copy something. So we can select it and we can do our control or command C come off that object and do our control V or commands V and we can paste it. So a lot of the familiar shortcuts work within the software but it's also got some bespoke ones which work specifically for this. There is an indicator of what the shortcuts are within the drop down menu at the top with each of the tools that's available it will show you if there is one a shortcut at the right hand side so if you find you're using certain tools more than others it's often very handy to memorize and utilize two or three of the the most used shortcuts because improving your workflow you can speed up certain actions so I'll do a copy and paste on a shortcut we can group items together with a shortcut and we can weld again these are terms that we'll use and talk about in a later tutorial but just knowing that there is shortcuts available that are very useful for our workflow